This is Twit. Let's get to some headlines. Hey, yes. In an yes. unusual twist of affairs, China's dropping pieces of debris on people <laughs> out of the sky. You know, so, I thought. I, th- I thought this was an April Fool's joke because on April the 2nd, which was, I think, the Tuesday of the week that we're recording this, uh, and the day after April Fool's, I got all these calls about <laughs> from people in California saying, hey, what was that thing in the in the sky last night? It was like crazy, and it lit up the sky. And, of course, there was a SpaceX Starlink satellite launch from Vandenberg right. because, you know, these days, when isn't there, right? And right. so I was like, well, maybe it was that. And they're like, no, this was – they're like, look at the video. And the video, clearly, uh, you can see – uh, like debris breaking up. It's something that it's very clearly uh, a large object. It's not like a stage or something like that. It's, it's, it's not a meteor, which I was asked about too. Um, and uh, after a little bit of, of, of digging, the, the folks that hunt uh, this stuff down, uh, Jonathan McDowell, you know, at um, uh, 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 in Massachusetts and whatnot, they figured out that it was the orbital module of China's Shenzhou 15 crew capsule that oh just, you know, it, it launched in November of 2022. And if, if folks don't know, like, uh, uh, like are wondering, like, what is this orbital module? Don't they need that on a crew capsule? Uh, China's Shenzhou spacecraft are uh, like the Soyuz, they have three different compartments. There's the crew capsule part of it where the crew sits, the three of them, and that's in the center. On the top is this orbital module which is kind of like a storage room where they pack all their cargo and all the stuff. And then there's like a propellant and a service module that they use. And that orbital module can stay in orbit, you know, extra time. They used to use it for extra laboratory, you know, tests. But I guess they just left this one up there two years ago. And now it came back down to Earth. And they didn't tell anybody, hey, watch out for it, which, you know, is sort of par for the course for these uh, these reentries of Chinese space junk. Uh, no one was hurt. They, there weren't any reports of debris. Uh, are reaching the ground, um, but it did wow a lot of spectators across southern and central and even north parts of northern California. Now, I don't think uh, there's any specific mention of reentry tracking and and informing each other in the Outer Space Treaty, as I recall. But there there are other agreements and and customary behaviors about telling you know people that we okay we've got this uncontrolled reentry happening. You might want to duck and cover. So you're saying that was not the case here and hasn't that's, been with them in general? That's not what I mean. Normally, if there's a reentry, you don't really hear too much about it. There was there was one or two kind of satellites, like big satellites that fell that they said, oh, yeah, it's going to it's going to fall. We don't know where, you know, but we, we know it's coming down. Uh, the Tiangong uh, one and two. Uh, space laboratories, the the prototypes for the Tiangong space station, come right. to mind. They just let them fall out of space uncontrolled, uh, wherever they 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 happen to be. Um, it is a little weird that this one kind of was really visible from from well inland uh, uh, of the of the U.S. That they didn't tell them that it was coming down to be on the lookout for it. Um, but you know, if Space Command was tracking it and did get a, get a heads up, um, you know, we we didn't hear anything about that there. So. It's kind of customary to say, "Hey, we got some junk falling over your." Yeah, yeah, you might want to. You might, but if nothing else, you want to let uh, Space Force know so they don't, you know, hover their shoot it down or anything. Yeah, missile buttons. All right, and in keeping with our theme of death from above, um, we had another one that that came home to Florida, which is interesting. That uh, this one actually came home. I mean, it came right back near to to launch site. Yeah, yeah. This happened actually on March. Um, this happened on March 8th, but it was confirmed um, uh, over the, the, the weekend. And, and essentially in Naples, Florida, uh, a man, Alejandro Otero, reported that something crashed through his roof and both floors of his house, uh, you know, in the afternoon, like at 2.30. And, uh, and it's, it's like a, a, a weird cylindrical tube. And we've got some pictures of it actually on uh, Anthony. It's online. I think it's uh, 24 uh, there where you can see the actual photos of this thing. It's just a big hunk of metal. Uh, very, very strange. Uh, and some, some folks were wondering, is it in fact space junk? And what they found out was that it appears to be uh, part of a, a, a big uh, NASA pallet that they tossed off the space station uh, a good while back, a part of the, the EP9. battery pallet, right? Yeah, the battery pallet. <laughs> so during during a, a spacewalk, and uh, and the, the, it's pretty chunky, you know, these things. And so it did it did come come back, and they think that that's what this was. It was a a big piece of space junk that uh, that was survived the reentry because these are really dense metal mm. uh, objects, uh, and that's typically what does survive. Uh, and it's I just tell you, I mean, when this. 
when this happens, it's just a miracle that no one is hurt when it comes crashing through somebody's house like that. So, um, but yeah, yeah, they launched it out of Florida uh, near Naples, uh, for Cape Canaveral, and it came back home. I guess it was, um, it was a, a little sad and homesick uh, from its stomping grounds. It's kind of interesting because I, it's been a few years since I looked this up, but I was looking up meteorite impacts quite some time ago. And most of them don't seem to have quite that much motive force <laughs> behind them. You know, they might come through a ceiling, but this one went through a ceiling and two levels of flooring, right? Yeah, yeah. And it, it must have been super, super, like, like dense, right? Because it's a, uranium to... or something. No, it's a, <laughs> it was a hydrogen. Oh, what was it? it was, it's the last generation of uh, battery technology. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, wow. uh, I mean, and, and, and that's the, what, isn't that the plot of Dead Like Me? Right. She, the, the main, the main star, she, she was walking down the street and she got, uh, she got hit by a piece of the mirror space station toilet and it killed her. And then she became like an under, uh, like a grim reaper or something like that. <laughs> okay. Um, what I also thought was kind of interesting about this was that the whole reason that they abandoned that pallet in orbit, which is not something they would normally do was because they had had kind of a backup, you know, the, the traffic to and from the space station is pretty tightly controlled and very constrained. And they were they had just used as I gather their last Japanese um, cargo ferry, mm-hmm. and because normally they they put this in one of those and bring it home, I guess, but they didn't have anything large enough um, to handle it, and so they tried to figure out other ways. Uh, you know, the Dragon capsule wasn't big enough, the Soyuz, of course, isn't big enough, and without having the uh, what what was the Japanese module called? Not Hakuto. K- Akibo. Kibo? No, 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 not not the not the orbital module, the uh, the cargo carrier. Oh, the the pallet. You mean the the oh the oh the um the HDB HDB. Yeah, HDB. yeah, yeah. They yeah. used up their last HDB, so that was that, and they just had to let it go and cross their fingers. Anyway, I'm glad it didn't do more damage than it did. And, and we should point out that this is this is a a, a pallet that was jettisoned back in 2021. It wasn't like it was just like in the last year or so. It's it's been up there, and it was expected to re-enter. Uh, and burn up in the atmosphere. And so right. this is this is how they, they made that deduction. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there. <laughs>